This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbilmec, a better road planner, Camp Power and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? We are at Elbilmec at Lierskogen. Today I will do a degradation test of Jaguar I-Pace. This car has done over 190,000 kilometers. It's from 2018, so it's around uh, seven years now, six and a half, seven years. So I-Pace, yeah, it's been out for a while. It has the LG Chem battery, just like Tesla nowadays. Uh, but it didn't charge that fast, mostly at 80 kilowatt. Supposedly, yeah, you can get 100 kilowatt a little bit. So I want to see how much degradation does it have. Maybe it's better than Tesla, right? So yeah, how you can see inside, right in the back. Ooh, real leather. Holy cow, the brown seats are back. So, yeah, wait, what, what was that? Ignition on, it said. Okay, well, uh, I don't think we're gonna ignite anything, hopefully. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, okay. Here, uh, what, what kind of ancient software is this? We don't see any state of charge here. We can see it here in the charging screen, you know. Fat e-tron was also like this. Uh, but um, at 100% state of charge, um, at least car scanner reports 96%. I wonder if that's the true state of charge. There is no variable in car scanner for the, the displayed state of charge. Voltage is high, the pack voltage. I remember it from I-Pace time. We're pulling a little bit now when we are stationary, so I might correct for that because yeah, we are sucking, I don't know, maybe a couple of hundred watt hour. Um, battery is at 11 to 13 degrees Celsius. And then well, that variable is not working, seems like. But here, the car claims that state of health is 90%. Hmm. And also when we charge to 100%, cell voltage is only 4.1 to 4.1, uh, 13. So I think if you want to go for real 100%, like Tesla and, uh, uh, and also Leaf tends to do it, then they charge to 4.15 or 4.2 volts. So, yeah, this could possibly be good for degradation then. And then also here, there is a report. It says Elbilmec. And, um, oh, can you see that? Oh, it's kind of small letters, but uh, there's some state of health here, right? Not sure how this was tested. And then it reports it as 100%. Uh, no, that, that can't be right, because if we look here, we have 191,000 on the anometer. That's a lot of cycles. So, okay, anyway, let's get ready and then do the test. Well, we're on the move and uh, I'm going to speed things up by going, going at 120 on the speed, though. I think that's around 117 kilometers per hour. So we generate a little bit more heat. Uh, battery is heating up here, but um, uh, then the battery is warmer and then we get more energy out of it. So. Um, yeah, the first thing I noticed is the navigation here is kind of clumsy. We are set in auto or in night mode. We have to, but even in night mode, it is bright like this. So I don't want to keep the navigation screen on. And in general, the, the whole menu system here is quite clumsy. Also, the, the, I never like the scroll, okay, scroll wheel here. Uh, to, not to enter some settings, you have to go here and then you can go, use scroll wheel. But if you scroll a bit too much up, then you close the menu and then it becomes volume control. Okay, whatever. It's it's an old car, yeah, but seems like the software has not been updated at all. Holy macaroni. The consumption is 302 watt hour per kilometer. Well, this is just like I remember i -Pace. It was a thirsty beast. And over 10 years ago, Tesla was dominating the long-range premium EV market with more or less. And then the i -Pace was the first worthy competitor with 90 kilowatt hour battery and all-wheel drive and 400 horsepower. So um, I also remember how the i -Pace was because uh, it's comfortable, is well, actually, not that spacious, uh, quite poor utilization of the space. It's a big car, external-wise, but only 20 banana boxes. Uh, but um, the howling noise or the rumbling noise from the IPS can can be heard here also. Similar to what I experienced with um, uh, Audi Q6 e-tron. 
so um, yeah I don't know what's up with that but um, if you change some of the tires that might help or rims but it doesn't appear to be the quietest EV out there holy crap this car is annoying see when I go to the cog wheel here wait for the lag <laughs> and then all settings wait for the lag and then you find features wait for the lag and then you scroll uh, try to dig into this messy OS uh, messy UI um, low friction launch okay well, then I wasn't looking for that setting you go back and then you're suddenly back home the fox man huh and then, all right, whatever, I give up. We are now at Langongen. We're gonna turn around here because the motorway ends here. Yeah, they are building a new motorway, but it takes some time. So yes, we're down to 54% battery, wow. You know when I tested, uh, it was uh, the EQC recently. I drove the same route because I've also borrowed it from uh, uh, Elbin Mac. And then... I wonder if I also had roughly the same uh, state of charge when I arrived here. Yeah, okay, so now we just turn back. And uh, yeah, so far we have, let's see, 316 watt hour per kilometer. Yeah, we've done 116 kilometers. Okay, well, at least now it's Sunday. Well, technically it's Monday, but no, no, it's. it's, it's it's Saturday night, or technically it's Sunday morning or night, so there's almost no traffic now, so we can hammer it. But I noticed that the auto stair is really weird. You see the symbols there. Uh, it will randomly just stop working. And also many times it doesn't sense my hands, I have to jerk on the steering wheel. But uh, yeah, notice many times it will just suddenly steer to the right or to the left. So I have to constantly watch over so it doesn't mess up everything here. All right, we're done with the test. We are at Leertoppen Supercharger. We have... Wait, I've seen this before. Huh. Um, we had 8% earlier. And then when I park here, then we had 6%. And now we have 5%. Mm. And then I think if you keep staying here it might drop even more i've seen <laughs> so actually um yeah but um okay here we see 308 watt hour per kilometer wow okay 230 kilometers done and then um anything interesting here well battery is a 23 to 28 degrees celsius that's somewhat high gap or delta between min and max very cool and in and cool and out from the battery. Uh, this could indicate that it's scavenging heat from the motors to heat up the battery. Yeah, all than that, yeah, okay. Uh, cell voltage, 3.4, they're not that low. Yeah, I've seen Tesla go as low as, oh, I mean, Tesla go below three volts. But, uh, okay, um, yeah, still 5%, but, uh, I mean, I'm not keen on trying to go uh, run out of juice here, uh, one at night. <laughs> but don't count on those five extra percent, uh, five remaining percent. And also, it's not linear. It's going to drop like a rock towards the end. So, um, but okay, uh, let's plug in and see what kind of speed we get. Wow, really? It costs 2.1 nook per kilowatt hour. Oh, that is cheap for high power charging. 250 kilowatt. Yeah, you see, 4% now. We've just been sitting here. Okay, now it goes to 5. So, yeah, when we parked, we had 6 and then 5 and then 4. And now we are charging. And this is quite primitive uh, charging screen. Uh, we see that it will take 1 hour and 28 minutes to charge to, well, I'm assuming 100%. But other than that, okay, we see range, but not how many kilometers per hour or how many kilowatt we're charging at. Also, if we start the car uh, in my EV, you see this? Not very useful. 
But here, okay. The car scan, if you can see it, you get 95 kilowatt. Yeah, okay, okay. That's what I've seen before also uh, five, six years ago when I tested these ice paces. And then, well, how long can we keep this speed then? No, we get battery low warning. Of course, when we are plugged in charging at a high power charger, we get that warning. <laughs> wow, even at 25%, it can maintain 100 kilowatt. When I tested this car many years ago, I didn't get 100 kilowatt for that long. I would get 100 kilowatt just briefly for a, a few percent, and then it would drop to 80 kilowatt. So it seems like they have updated the charging curve. Well, th this might have happened many years ago, but even this car with so many kilometers on the, the battery, it still has good charging speed. Okay, finally, at 39%, it started throttling, but it did maintain roughly 100 kilowatt all the way to 39%. And even now it's taking 92-ish kilowatt. Wow. But when it comes to degradation, uh, the test today shows that we have 73.8 kilowatt hour, if we can trust all the numbers here. Uh, and then I add um, 0.5 kilowatt hour of hammer losses because we went a little bit faster than 90 kilometers per hour. And also because we were idling for maybe five, 10 minutes when I was setting up a car scanner. And then it pulled roughly 500 watts for something, I don't know. Uh, but HVAC was off. And also when the car was new, I have 81.8 kilowatt hour. So that means 9.2% degradation. Uh, that could be the best case. Worst case is that uh, when it shows uh, 4% here, if we were sitting longer or we, if we would keep driving, we would suddenly go into limp mode and then the car would more or less just die. This has happened before. Uh, actually, many, many years ago at uh, Ayunti Dal with my friends, uh, I pace, it went from 5% to 1% and something, and, but I was right at Ayunti Charger. So that's why I'm thinking that those 4% remaining, can we count on it? <laughs> if we can't count on it, then uh, we don't have 9.2% degradation. It will be around 11% or 12% degradation. But okay, we're just gonna go for that 9.2%. But uh, it's not the best we've seen. Uh, EQC was actually really good. EQC had higher mileage, but uh, only 5.9% degradation. Uh, but that, that's Mercedes, you know, that's quality, that's premium. But here, okay, um, but compared to maybe Tesla, I think it's roughly on par with Tesla. Yeah, or other high mileage, big-ish batteries. Mm. Yeah, not sure, but okay. At least I tried it now, so, but wait, wait huh. The 9.2% degradation that I calculated is actually on par with what the car claims, 90.5% state of health. But this document here claims 100% and that is just uh, worth... Um, well, we can use this to wipe our ass, right? <laughs> so, yeah, maybe that's it then. 90% uh, uh, state of health or around 10% degradation. Well, uh, I don't know what you guys think, but for me, I think it's... I think actually it's okay. Yeah, 10% after almost 200k. But then the, the, the EQC was just exceptionally good. Unless EQC hides capacity when it's new and then it eats up the buffer as it ages to uh, kind of hide degradation, but also to make the car more consistent over time. But eventually, once the buffer is eaten up, then it will have a a bigger drop. We don't know. Ich weiß nicht. But anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.